Oh, there we go. All right. Sorry about that, guys. My power went out here at home, which is not fun. Um, but we should be in shape now. Uh, oh, yeah, that's not going to work. But let me launch this back and we can get back to things. I'm so sorry about that. If it's not one thing, it's another thing. It's... Well, there's always a struggle. So here we are. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me and see everything okay? While I wait for my modem to boot back up, I'm using my phone's hotspot, which I think is not quite as good a connection. All right, what are we not hearing or what are we not seeing? Voices cutting out. Okay. <clears throat> I will try to speak very slowly and very clearly. Um, while I wait for my modem to power back on, I have to use my phone's hotspot. That's the only internet connection I have until the modem wakes back up. As soon as that is back up, I will switch back to that connection where you should be able to hear a little better. We were saying that the force here, 40 Newtons, is in SI units. But this distance, five centimeters, is not in SI units. So in order to get an answer out in joules, we need to convert everything to SI units. <clears throat> the SI unit for distance is the meter, not the centimeter. And the prefix for uh, centimeter, centi, means one one hundredth of. So five centimeters is five over 100 meters. So this is 40 Newtons equals K times five one hundredths of a meter. One centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. Everybody on board there? Now we can solve for K. Let me see if my regular connection is viable again. Let's try it. All right, everybody still with me? We're back on the main connection now. I should be able to go back to the normal speed. Very good. All right. So <clears throat> we convert the five centimeters into meters because that's the SI unit for distance. We need everything in SI units in order to get an answer out in the end that is in joules because joules are the SI unit for work. <clears throat> uh, that means now that this is all in SI units, Newton's on the left, meters on the right, I can solve for K. That means I need to uh, divide everything by this quantity or multiply by 100 over 5. So this is 40 times 100 over 5. And this would be Newtons per meters. Um, that is K. And if you do this, uh, 40 divided by 5 is 8. 8 times 100 is 800. So 800, and it's Newtons over meters. That's K. That's the spring constant. <clears throat> so in other words, this for every meter you stretch the spring out, <clears throat> it fights you an additional 800 Newtons. That's, that's what this is measuring. It's the stiffness of the spring. So I know K, my force to stretch or compress the spring is 800. I'm just going to write it as 800 times X. And what you notice is that this force changes as x changes. It's not a constant force. What that means is that in order to figure out the amount of work done, I would want to multiply the force times the distance. So to stretch the spring 
a tiny distance. Call it dx. The tiny work done. would be, I'll call it dw, for a tiny amount of work, is equal to the force which is 800x times dx. This is the force. the force that I'm fighting, and this is the distance. And this is how you set up most of these problems. Because in the vast majority of interesting physics problems, the force that you're fighting is not constant, it changes. You need to find the force at an arbitrary distance x and then multiply that by the little distance dx that you're trying to move the thing. <clears throat> the picture here my spring was out here at 10 centimeters. And I want to stretch it just a tiny little bit. Uh, let's say we're going to go from x here to just a little bit past that. dx over here. So this little distance here is dx. The force that I'm that the spring is pulling back when the spring is already stretched out x meters is 800 x. Right, that's what we figured out here. To hold the spring at x, you know, meters past its natural length uh, requires 800 x newtons of force. In other words, if the spring is x meters past its natural length, the spring is pulling back with 800 x newtons of force. What we want to do is figure out the amount of work done in stretching that from x to x plus dx, just stretching it a tiny bit past. Once we have a formula for that, and that is the force times the distance, you can integrate this from wherever to wherever to find the work done in stretching that spring from wherever to wherever. So this takes a little bit of a little bit of thought to understand, but if you spend a second thinking about it, you will get there. <clears throat> if I'm already holding the spring at x and I want to stretch it just a tiny little bit more, dx then the work done in doing that, the tiny amount of work done in doing that is the force the spring is pulling back at that distance x times the little amount of distance I want to stretch it beyond x. And we call this dw, the little differential element of work. Finally, to calculate my total work, The work to stretch from 15 cm to 18 cm is w equals, it's the integral of dw, right? This is, this is similar to the volume problems we were looking at, where you integrate the little element of something to get the whole thing. We have to figure out the bounds, though. This is going to be a definite integral. So I'm trying to stretch from 15 centimeters to 18 centimeters. 
And remember, we think of the spring's natural length as 10 centimeters as, as the origin. So if I'm trying to go from 15 centimeters, that's 0 0.05 meters or five over 100 meters out to 0 0.08 meters. These are the X values that we're talking about because it's natural length of 10 centimeters is uh, where we, we consider the spring to be at rest. That's X equals zero. We have stretched it zero meters past its natural length. So we're going to integrate <clears throat> this DW from 0 0.05 to 0 0.08. Yeah, it takes a second, right? So if this is the natural length, let me come in here and, and change this to zero, right? We'll say it like that. So your, <clears throat> your spring, when it is at 10 centimeters of length, has been stretched zero meters. That is the natural length of the spring. So we'll call that natural length of the spring where x is equal to zero. In other words, if I'm picking my coordinate system, then my y-axis is right here, my x-axis is right here, and this is x equals zero at the natural length of the spring. So when the spring is at 15 centimeters of length, I have stretched it five centimeters. In other words, x is 0 0.05 meters. Right. So 15 centimeters is five centimeters past its natural length. So in other words, let's carefully define the variable x. x is the distance, the spring, has been stretched past its natural length. Yeah, this is this is a, another one of those little challenging things, and it's about physics. It's about picking a reference frame. So in this equation here, in Hooke's law, that distance x is the distance the spring has been stretched or compressed beyond its natural length. <clears throat> so I don't care that the natural length is 10 centimeters. What I care is that when the spring, spring is 15 centimeters, it's been stretched 5 centimeters, or 0 0.05 meters. When the spring is at 18 centimeters, it's been stretched 8 centimeters, or 0 0.08 meters. That, does that feeling a little better? Yeah, it's a little wonky. I, I'm, it's all coming in DMs, but trust me, everybody who's having this thought is like, you're, you're all on the same page, I promise. Um, maybe it would help if I, if I drew the picture a little bit bigger. Before I do this, in order to keep your notes cohesive, the integral we're gonna calculate for the work here is integral from 0 0.05, to 0 0.08 of this thing, 800x dx. 800 is a constant. It comes along for the ride. Antiderivative for x is x squared over 2. And we'll evaluate this from 0 0.05 to 0 0.08. And that <clears throat> 800 over 2 is 400. And that's just going to be 0 0.08 squared minus 0 0.05 squared. Just for fun. Thank you. 
get here is about 1.56 joules. Okay, so let's finish up the problem here and then we're gonna go back and talk about where those bounds come from because this is this will help you understand what's going on. But in order to keep the workflow reasonable, here's the actual calculation at the end. <clears throat> So why are we integrating from 0 0.05 to 0 0.08? That seems to be the sticking point that I'm getting the most DMs about. <clears throat> it's all about your choice of reference frame. The thing that makes physics hard, one of the things that makes physics hard is that the physical situation, my desk doesn't have an XY plane drawn on it already. You know, There is no universal reference frame. In order to solve problems like these, you need to pick your reference frame. So I'm going to redraw this picture larger and with more colors. Here's the wall. Here's the spring at its natural length of 10 centimeters. I don't actually give a shit that the natural length is 10 centimeters. What I do, here's my x-axis. I choose to call this x equals zero. I can do that, right? I could put the x-axis wherever I wanted and in whatever direction I wanted. I could say that the x-axis points this way and that x equals zero is over here. I could say that the x-axis points this way and that the x, x equals zero is right here. It's totally up to me to introduce the coordinates in the way that makes the problem as simple as possible. What this means is that when the spring is stretched out to 15 centimeters, the x position there is five centimeters or 0 0.05 meters. And what I'm aiming to do is calculate the work in going from this five centimeters out to eighteen centimeters. So I'm going from x equals five centimeters to how far are we beyond the natural length here? Well, natural length is 10 centimeters, that's x equals zero. Stretch to 15 centimeters of length, that's x equals five centimeters. I'm going another three centimeters beyond that. That's eight centimeters or 0 0.08 meters. And what we're doing is we're calculating the work and going from here to here. And I know the force that the spring is pulling back with at every point in between here and here. I'm not guessing though. Um, I, think, I think we're getting closer. So I'm trying to respond to the DMs I'm getting. Uh, the question was, so are we guessing how many centimeters it's stretching from x equals zero? Not guessing, but yes. I'm calculating or determining how many centimeters it's been stretched past its natural length, which I choose to label as x equals zero. Does that feel a little better? So 
So everything in my problem is happening from here to here. This is the interval of x values that I'm working with. <clears throat> and that's from 0 0.05 meters to 0 0.08 meters. So at any x value over here, the force that the spring is pulling back with is 800 times x. If I want to find the work that is done, then I need to integrate that force times the little distance dx from x equals 0 0.05 meters to 0 0.08 meters. <clears throat> I think that's about as granular as I can get here without, without making things harder to understand. So go ahead and, and first make sure you have a, a screenshot or a good copy of this drawing um, and, and try to think your way through it. Uh, I do intend to do another example, but I don't want to do another Hooke's Law example right away. So the next example I had planned for you guys, oh, this fucking power outage is killing me. Time 1110 to 1235, we got a few minutes. Uh, the last example I had planned for you guys, and we do need to take a look at, at one other type of problem here, is this problem with the cable. <clears throat> so um, I will be posting this video after the fact, and there are homework problems of this nature for you to work. I encourage you to rewatch the video, study your notes, and then attempt the homework problem and see if you can, can work it in that sort of context. Um, because I, I do need to show you a diversity of problems here. So this last one, um, we have a 100 foot cable, which is hanging off the roof of a tall building. The cable weighs Two hundred pounds. I want to find the work done in to uh, haul the cable back up to the top of the building. Okay. Uh, the picture here is, is the key. So here's my tall building. And this cable <clears throat> hanging down off the top of that building. And it's hanging down 100 feet. And it's a 100 foot long cable. Maybe it was on a spool up here and Spider-Man used it to swing, I guess Spider-Man's got webs. Someone used it to swing down, die hard style, into the, into the side of the building. <clears throat> I've got a dude back at the top here. And he's going to go, eh, 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 eh and pull the cable back up to the roof. I don't know how much work he does. Like the previous problem and like all physics problems, the crucial thing here is to choose your coordinate system in a way that makes life easy. We're used to thinking of the x-axis as pointing sideways, but it can point up and down. There's no, no rule that says it can't do that. We're used to thinking of up as being the positive direction, and to the right as being a positive direction, but I could say that my x-axis points down and that the zero value for x is the top of the building. So right here would be x equals 100.
what I need to do is find the force due to gravity on a little piece of the cable at an arbitrary x value between 0 and 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop x in here. I don't care what that x value is. It's an arbitrary x value between 0 and 100. And I'm going to take a little dx length of cable at that value, at this x value. And I'm going to find the force due to gravity on that little chunk of cable. Then I'm going to integrate that force times that little distance as x goes from 0 out to 100. So first, uh, I want to find the force due to gravity on my little dx length piece of cable which is x uh, feet from the top. Because that's the force I'm fighting and pulling it up. <clears throat> In order to do that, uh, I need to know the weight, right? Uh, here, the cable's length is given in feet, and its weight is given in pounds. So I don't need to worry about the difference between mass and weight here. Force due to gravity, remember, this is weight. it is. Okay. So the whole cable weighs 200 pounds. Which means the unit weight of the cable is 200 pounds over 100 feet. In other words, it weighs two pounds per foot. Right, so every foot of the cable weighs two pounds. Therefore, <clears throat> the weight of this little dx length of cable is the unit weight times its length. And dx here is being measured in feet. In other words, this is just 2dx. And it's measured in pounds. I'll leave the units off, right? The feet cancel. And this is in, we'll write it like that. That's the force, right? Weight is force due to gravity. i.e. the force on our little piece of cable 
X feet from the top. is minus f equals 2 dx. All right. <clears throat> now, what do I need to calculate my little element of work? Well, I need to know the distance. So if I'm going to haul this little bit of cable up to the top of the roof, how far up does it have to go? Can anybody help me with that? This little chunk of cable here that weighs two dx pounds or has a force due to gravity pulling down two dx pounds, how far up does it have to go to get to the top of the roof? How far is that little piece of cable here? from the top of the roof. Look at your coordinate system. Where did we say this piece of cable was? We said it's X feet from the top. It's the force times the distance. The force is 2dx. The distance is x. So that's x times 2dx. That's the distance times the force. Therefore, to hold the whole cable up, we will do work, which is the integral of the little element of work from x equals 0 all the way up to x equals 100. Which is the integral from 0 to 100 of x times 2 times dx or 2x dx. An antiderivative for 2x is just x squared. And we're integrating from 0 to 100. So that's 100 squared minus 0 squared. That's uh, 100 times uh, 100 is 10,000. And that is in foot pounds. So <clears throat> I think we are a little bit over time. I am going to leave it here. I can get this to a place where you can screenshot the whole thing. These examples and more are in the book. The idea, again, is that you find the force acting on a little piece of the cable here, which is at an arbitrary x position between 0 and 100. 
then you find the little amount of work required to lift that little piece of cable. If you want to find the work to lift the whole cable, you just integrate or add up all of those little amounts of work as x goes from 0 to 100 to cover the whole length of the cable. <clears throat> um, I will be gentle regarding work on the exam because I am of the opinion that this is a mathematics class and not a physics class. But this is one of the standard applications of calculus to physics. And it's not terribly hard if you take the time to understand what's going on. So I do have an office hour today from 1 to 2. If you want to come chat about that stuff, we can do it there. Um, there is a homework set up for you to be working on. And it was going to be due next Monday. That homework set begins with some 6.4 problems like these. Um, and then also has some integration by parts problems. And we will be talking about integration by parts on Friday. So that's it for me for today. Thank you guys for hanging out. I'm so sorry about that power outage. That shit is annoying. Um, if you need to see me, office hours today, one to two, you can send me a Canvas message, of course, email, Discord, all that stuff works great. Um, and I'll see you on Friday. Take care, guys.